In this video presentation, we will discuss about the African horse sickness. One of the important notifiable disease and a vector-borne viral disease affecting equines. These are the notifiable diseases affecting equines listed by OIE. African horse sickness is also one of the notifiable disease listed under classification. Rio Viarde family classified under the Baltimore Group 3. Group 3 comprises of viruses with double-stranded RNA genome. The word Rio refers to respiratory enteric orphan viruses, that is, these virus infect humans, respiratory and intestinal tracts without symptoms. Some of the veterinary important viral diseases under this family are, blue tongue, and African horse sickness, under the genus Orbivirus, rotaviral enteritis, under the genus rotavirus. The diseases under the genus Orbivirus, and cultivirus are, arthropod-borne viral diseases. The diseases under the genus rotavirus, and orthoreovirus are, non-arthropod-borne viral diseases, transmitted through, fecal, oral route transmission. In this lecture we will discuss in detail on, African horse sickness. The other names for this infection are, Peste equina africana, Peste equine, and Perdisiect. The causative agent of disease is, African horse sickness virus, which belongs to genus Orbivirus, of the family Rio Viarde. This virus is an arbovirus, that is, transmitted by biting midge arthropod like Coolicides. So the infection is a non-contagious, arthropod-borne viral disease, characterized by pulmonary and cardiac lesions, affecting horse. Host range. Apart from the horse, this virus also infects mules, donkeys, and zebras. Horses are highly susceptible for this infection, followed by mules, donkeys, and zebras are least susceptible for this infection. Similarly, high mortality rate is seen in horses followed by mules, and then donkeys. But the mortality is rare in zebras. This infection is prevalent in, southern Africa, and northern Africa occasionally. There are nine antigenically distinct serotypes of African horse sickness virus existing, named from serotype 1 to 9, identified by the virus neutralization test. India, is free of African horse sickness infection. Last case was reported in 1963, which was, serotype 9 African horse sickness virus. Virus morphology. This virus posses triple spherical capsid, layered one over the other. Outer capsid, core capsid, and inner capsid, which encases segmented genome. This segmentation may lead to genetic reassortment. The entire virus is about 75 to 80 nanometer diameter. VP2 and VP5 codes for the outer capsid. VP2 is a serotype specific antigen, and they play a major role in the antigenicity, that is, virus neutralizing antigens. VP3 and VP7 codes for the core capsid. VP7 is a serogroup specific antigen. And VP1, VP4 and VP6 codes for the inner capsid. Genomic organization. The genome is multipartite, that is segmented, and double-stranded RNA. This segmented genome may result in genetic reassortment. The orbivirus possess, 10 segments. Rotavirus possess, 11 segments. Cultivirus, 12 segments and orthoreovirus, 10 segments. So, our interest here is on, orbivirus, which possess, 10 segments. Each segment codes for one or two proteins. The 5' prime end is methylated, that is capped. And the 3' prime end has, no poly A tail. As we already discussed, the segmented genome may result in genetic reassortment. That may lead to evolution of new virus. If a horse is infected with three similar type of viruses, but different serotypes at same time, Due to reassortment of segments, that is genetic recombination, there may be evolution of new virus, that may be a hybrid of this three virus. This type of major change in the virus is called as antigenic shift. This happens due to reassortment of segments, that is genetic recombination, leads to evolution of new virus. Virus replication. This virus enters the host by endocytosis. Following entry, the virus replicates in the cytoplasm. Here, the genome is double-stranded RNA. Only, the negative sense RNA are transcribed and synthesis the positive sense RNA. This positive sense RNA, which are similar to mRNA, are translated for viral proteins. These positive sense RNA are synthesized, in excess. So, on the other side, these excess positive sense RNA, act as template for negative sense strand synthesis. Later, these synthesize double-stranded viral RNA, and the translated viral proteins self-assembles to form virion. 
Transmission. This is an arthropod-borne viral infection. So biting midges like Coolicides species can act as the principal source of this virus, blood and semen from the infected animal can also source this virus. This virus enters the host through infected midge bite, which is a biological vector. The incubation period is usually 7 to 14 days from the entry of virus, but may be as short as 2 days. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through infected midge bite, the virus does its initial replication in the regional lymph node, spleen, and lung. Followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the endothelial cells, which may lead to, increased vascular permeability, edema, hemorrhage, and intravascular coagulation. Clinical manifestation. Four forms of this infection are seen. Peracute, or pulmonary form, also called as duncop. Subacute, or cardiac form, also called as decop. Mixed form. And subclinical form, also called as African horse fever. Peracute, or pulmonary form. In this, fever, severe respiratory distress, dyspnea, spasmodic coughing, dilated nostrils with frothy fluid oozing out, redness of conjunctiva, followed by rapid death within few hours is noticed. The picture shown here is the, dilated nostrils with frothy fluid oozing out, in horse, in pulmonary form. The picture shown here is the, redness of conjunctiva, in horse, in pulmonary form. The picture shown here is the, foam from the nares, due to pulmonary edema, in horse, in this form. Subacute, or cardiac form. In this, Edematous swelling of the supraorbital fossa, eyelids, facial tissues, neck, thorax, brisket and shoulder region. Followed by death, due to cardiac failure is noticed. The picture shown here is the, swelling of supraorbital fossa, in horse, in cardiac form. Mixed form. In this, both pulmonary, and cardiac signs are noticed. But mild in nature, that do not progress. And last, subclinical form, or African horse fever. In this, Mild clinical signs, with fever, and general malaise, for short period is noticed. Deaths are rare in this form. Based on severity, high mortality is observed in pulmonary form, that is up to 95%. Followed by mixed form, 70-80%. to And cardiac form, 50% or more. In subclinical form, or African horse fever, the animal will typically recovers. Post-mortem findings. In pulmonary form, severe. Diffuse pulmonary edema, hydrothorax, that is fluid and abdominal, and thoracic cavity. And enlarged edematous lymph nodes are observed. In cardiac form, yellow gelatinous infiltration at, head, neck, shoulders, brisket, ventral abdomen, rump regions. And hydropericardium is observed. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the prevalence of the biological vectors like Coolicides species. By signs and clinical symptoms observed like, frothy fluid from nares, redness of conjunctiva, and swelling of supraorbital fossa. And by post-mortem findings like hydrothorax, and hydropericardium. Next. Laboratory diagnosis. For a lab diagnosis. Blood, paired serum samples are collected from live animal. In dead animal. Spleen, lung, lymph nodes are collected. This virus can be cultivated or isolated in lab by three ways. Number 1. Embryonated egg inoculation. 13 to 15 days old embryonated chicken eggs are used. For this intravenous route of inoculation method is done. The second method of cultivation of this virus is. Cell culture system. BHK21, varicells, and insect cells can be used. The third method of cultivation of this virus is. Animal inoculation. Here, newborn mice are used, with intracerebral route of virus inoculation. These are some of the laboratory tests can be done for diagnosis of this virus. For antigen detection, YALISA, virus neutralization test, reverse transcriptase PCR, and DNA sequencing for serotyping is done. For antibody detection, complement fixation test, competitive YALISA, and indirect YALISA is done. In these tests, known African horse sickness viral antigen is used. Prevention and control. These are the measures followed for the prevention and control of this infection. Like, vector control, primarily done, here, water management is done to reduce of Coolicides breeding sites. Use of insecticides and larvicides by spraying over breeding areas. And dipping of animals in insect repellents. Quarantine and restricted susceptible animal movement, during insect activity period. Vaccination using live attenuated vaccine, 
against specific African horse sickness virus serotypes of concern in a particular area is used. Monovalent and polyvalent live attenuated vaccine are available. Annual vaccination is followed in affected areas, regions and countries. Serological surveillance, identification and tracing of susceptible and potentially infected animals. With this we are coming to the end of African horse sickness infection. In next video presentation we will discuss on the rotaviral enteritis, under the genus rotavirus, of same viral family in detail. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.